So the first uh, issue, and, uh, and I would like to uh, make it uh, as uh, short as possible because we are um, uh, short of time, is who defines an elderly patient? Usually a professor of mine told me that it's only five years above the person who's speaking. And, <laughs> and uh, in, in, this, in this case, uh, we have to also notice that myeloma is a disease that occurs in the seventh and eighth deca decade of life, and now that the baby boomers are living longer, it is uh, a larger population. Perhaps uh, it's, it's occurring that more than 50% of the patients are in that age group. As you can see from these uh, uh, curves from the SEER uh, data, you can see that uh, patients age 65 and 75 are approximately 28%, and that uh, the minority of patients are, in fact, younger than 65. So those are, would be, in the uh, European population, the minority would be uh, stem cell transplant uh, candidates, whereas the larger major majority of patients will be uh, candidates for other approaches. We also have to recognize that uh, survivals are dependent uh, a lot on age. A 65-year-old uh, patient, uh, and this is da old data from 2001, the five-year survival was 42 percent, whereas at the same time, the older patients, those who are not candidates for stem cell transplant, have a quarter. Uh, looking at more recent data and trying to extrapolate from the concept that the novel agents have increased the survival uh, of patients uh, um, with the advent of thalidomide, lenalidomide, bortezomib, carfilzomib, and now pomalidomide, we have to also recognize that the person, persons who get the benefit of all those uh, novel agents are in fact not the uh, older patients, but the, the younger patients. So older patients remain a uh, challenge uh, and an area that we should uh, work in improving that type of survival. So what do we, uh, what are the leading questions to get into that, into, in, into that uh, goal? Uh, here are listed, and I'm going to begin with, what is the goal of treatment? Dr. Mark already made a large uh, uh, vote for the, the concept of CR. And if we try to define this in the non-transplant setting, indeed, uh, Dr. Van der Velde, in a, in a large uh, uh, meta-analysis, has tried to do the same that he did with the uh, transplant candidates. And he failed to identify a large advantage of CR, perhaps because uh, the confounding factors of therapy and toxicity. Uh, so those are the major problems that uh, uh, impair our ability to achieve uh, deep responses. Uh, and those are the comorbidities, the uh, frailty of the patients, and the, um, uh, the, the toxicity of the, of the drugs. Non notwithstanding also, uh, from the uh, group, the Italian group, a retrospective analysis has uh, uh, looked at CR in a, a more modern er era and has seen that those patients in a retrospective analysis who achieve a CR indeed had a better outcome when uh, compared with the uh, with those patients who had lesser r response rates. So perhaps the, with the new agents, with better utilized agents, we will have the ability to achieve that deeper response and offer better responses. And from the Spanish group, you can even see that progression-free survival can increase significantly if you have a deeper response in this elderly population who is 65 years or, or older. So Dr. Palumbo has uh, analyzed this in a a group of patients who have a median age of uh, 70 and has uh, done a, a aggressive induction with path chemotherapy, double transplant at 100 milligrams per meter square with consolidation with lenalidomide and prednisone and maintenance lenalidomide and also has noticed that uh, progression-free survival uh, improves with deeper responses and overall response rate, uh, uh, overall uh, uh, survival also is Im improved with, uh, with complete responses. So I think we can, we can conclude that in the novel air, uh, agent era, CR should be an important objective in elderly patients. 
but we should not only aim to obtain the CR, but we ha it has to be sustained, it has to be high quality, and it has to be balanced with acceptable toxicity. So what is the best induction regimen? Well, certainly there is a lot of experience with thalidomide. Three trials are listed here from the French and from the Dutch uh, uh, groups have shown that they're improving the, the use of thalidomide as, in, uh, as induction in these uh, elderly patients and the MPT versus the MP. Response rates, progression-free survival and overall survival are uh, superior. Other studies only show advantage in response rate and progression-free survival and only one trial only also saw just a response rate. And the price that we have to pay for the thalidomide uh, in uh, addition to the methadone and prednisone construct is indeed the uh, high level of toxicity that thalidomide in long term occurs, indicating that there is a increased peripheral neuropathy, deep venous thrombosis, and toxicity uh, that induces discontinuations in about 35 to 40% of the, of the cases. So thalidomide is very challenging to give it long term uh, in this elderly population. Other trials from the British um, uh, have also, uh, and from, from Dr. Ludwig, is also have noticed that there's really no improvement in overall survival despite the use of uh, thalidomide in this, and, that the, and, the, and, the, and the problem is the thalidomide-related toxicity. So if we have a better drug, a drug that is less toxic than thalidomide, uh, and can be given in long term better than, than thalidomide will be lenalidomide. And in the elderly population, the most classic uh, um, work on this is uh, this trial, the O15, also led by Dr. Palumbo, in which compares uh, melphalan and prednisone versus melphalan and prednisone and lenalidomide. And melphalan and prednisone and lenalidomide uh, given uh, 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 followed by lenalidomide maintenance. And I have to notice that uh, the difference between each group uh, starts at the, at the end of cycle nine when lenalidomide is used as a maintenance. One of the strengths of this uh, study is that uh, every patient on disease progression was supposed to get lenalidomide and dexamethasone as salvage, and then we have control the, the salvage. The uh, challenges that this study has is that it was powered only for progression-free survival and not overall survival. But for response rates for MPR followed by lenalidomide versus melphalan and prednisone and MPR, it is noticeable that it's indeed a, an advantage for the maintenance uh, arm. And you can see the separation of the curves at the 10th cycle when uh, the lenalidomide uh, maintenance is what makes the, the difference. Perhaps the challenges in the elderly patients is that the combination of lenalidomide and melphalan are both myelosuppressive and you cannot provide proper dose intensity uh, uh, in these in this, uh, patients. And the overall survival, therefore, is uh, not there yet. The toxicity, again, a problematic in this uh, group of patients include neutropenia, and uh, the discussion on infections and secondary primary malignancies. Perhaps more classic in the European uh, 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 group, um, uh, perhaps is now standard of care everywhere in the world, is the VISTA trial where bortezomib, melphalan, and prednisone was compared with uh, melphalan and prednisone, and uh, uh, patients were followed until uh, um, um, progression, um, uh, utilizing uh, second, uh, primary endpoints time to progression, CR, overall response rate, and of course, progression-free survival and overall survival. And as you can see, the time to progression in the VMP arm is superior with 52% reduction in the risk of progression, and the overall survival is superior for the VMP arm um, um, with a 36% reduction in the risk of death from, uh, in the tri triplet compared with melphalan and prednisone. With an uh, uh, older uh, or subsequent uh, um, uh, updates, we can see that the overall survival by intention to treat continues to benefit the patients, offering an overall survival of uh, a benefit of 13.3 months in this triplet uh, co combined uh, compared with, uh, with uh, 
uh, methadone and prednisone. Also, the price that we're paying for the bortezomib uh, in addition to methadone and prednisone is uh, the um, GI toxicity and the peripheral neur neuropathy. So I think we could conclude from this part of the talk is that novel agents should be included. The, we have evidence based for bortezomib and lenalidomide more than the thalidomide, but there is generating uh, promising data in terms of the use of lenalidomide, bortezomib, and now carfilzomib. So is it possible to individualize the treatment to reduce the toxicity, which is one of the biggest challenges in the use of, uh, of this type of uh, therapies for the elderly? And we have to recognize that uh, not all the elderly patients are the same. This study by uh, Ruben uh, and, uh, et al. has uh, uh, demonstrated that if a patient is uh, independent, has a lesser mortality than a patient who is dependent of doing uh, balancing his checkbook or cooking for himself or even uh, more, uh, more uh, mortality you will see if a patient is unable to do their uh, daily activities. Similar, we have the, the data uh, emanating from uh, uh, Cornell in which Dr. Charlson identifies an index with comorbidity and age in which uh, identifies that the more comorbidities associated with, with this uh, score, uh, the survival decreases significantly. You have a drop from 100% uh, to 79% uh, to uh, when you achieve the uh, score three of the comorbidity index factor. So this is the way that uh, our fellows look, uh, usually during uh, rounds. And this is the way that uh, my grandmother looked when she's active. <laughs> Functional assessment is indeed very important. So that's one of the things that we were trying to look at the upfront protocol uh, and invite you all to visit the poster, which will be pre presented in, uh, the pro in, in the next ASH, in which we're comparing three different uh, bortezomib containing regimens, bortezomib dex versus bortezomib thalidomide dex. This. This is telling me to stop. Uh, bortezomib, thalidomide, dexamethasone in one arm, and uh, bortezomib, melphal, and prednisone as the, as the, uh, as the third, third arm, and all followed by maintenance after the eighth uh, cycle. The maintenance, this is the, one of the first trials in which maintenance bortezomib was tried in a weekly four out of six uh, uh, schedule. And I'm not going to bore you with all the results, it's just to identify you that there is a large population of elderly patients, where minorities included, and that the performance status of those patients are in general poor, and being a community-based uh, uh, tri uh, uh, trial, uh, many of these patients have poor Charleston comorbidity index. And in this case, we can see that at least progression-free survival, and we're already going to report the overall survival, uh, of the three arms is identical. However, that there is a decline on the use of, uh, of the quality of life we utilizing the three regimens, and that that quality of life only improves uh, when you begin the maintenance. Remind, remind you, the maintenance is weekly. So we already know that weekly administration of bortezomib is a better strategy to improve tolerability. Um, this is the, the data that uh, compares the uh, level of GI toxicity and peripheral neuropathy uh, from the VISTA trial uh, compared with the once a week uh, regimens from the Italians or from, this, uh, from the Spanish. And you can see a significant decrease on the discontinuation due to adverse events and a decreased incidence of grade three and four peripheral neuropathy. Uh, once a week administration of bortezomib it improves the efficacy uh, as you can see, CR rate improves if you give it weekly because you can give a better dose intensity uh, as you compare with twice, twice per week. Um, the planned dose for bortezomib, for instance, when you give it twi twice a week is 67, and when you deliver, uh, uh, you, 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 you check how much was actually delivered, you see almost half of it was delivered. Whereas if you give it weekly, you could see an improvement uh, on, the, on that ratio with a planned uh, dose given almost very similar to the one actually, actually delivered. And we also know that the use of succutaneous bortezomib can improve the, the uh, delivery of the drug, reducing the 
toxicity, but uh, 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 keeping the same efficacy in uh, overall response rate and, C and CR rate. So the, the, the last question of this is, can novel drugs improve the, the outcome? And of course, we all uh, are, have been uh, exposed to the combination of lenalidomide, low-dose dexamethasone, and carfilzomib. Um, we had a chance to do the first phase one of that, uh, of that combination, and also the phase two in relapse and refractory. And this is Dr. Jakubowiak's uh, work, in which, in which reports a 43% per, uh, CR rate with more than a 62% overall response rate. And you can see that uh, 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 with all the data available, usually you should think that 25 to 30 months of progression-free survival uh, in other regimens, this, this regimen appears to, be, to uh, possibly exceed that. We're waiting for more updated results in patients who are 65 years or older. If you look at the possible toxicity of this combination, it's very well tolerated, even in this uh, uh, aging population, um, indicating just myelosuppression and steroid-related uh, 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 side effects. In the same uh, context, it has been tried carfilzomib uh, in combination with a construct of melphalan and prednisone in this study led by Dr. Moreau, a phase one, phase two CMP study in which patients who were older than 65, not transplant candidates with those uh, 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 character, clinical characteristics were uh, introduced the combination of carfilzomib, uh, 30 minute infusion going from 20 to 27 and 20 to 36 and 20 to 45 in combination with the classical methadone and prednisone. And you can see a very dramatic overall response rate of 91% uh, and a VGPR uh, of 50% together with a CR of 6% exceeding uh, any of the results available in other combinations such as VMP or lenalidomide and dexamethasone. Uh, and in this uh, latest update, the progression free survival is 22 months, but it's a good beginning to, uh, to start thinking of a randomized trial of CMP versus a, a control. Just noticing that the toxicity is more common are anemia, uh, infection, fatigue, and neutropenia, but the most uh, frequent uh, at the important grade of grade three and four are indeed uh, uh, anemia and neutropenia. So this is the Clarion study, which compares CMP and VMP now running in Europe, uh, United States, and uh, Latin America. Many other studies are looking at uh, uh, different combinations to uh, try to learn more about uh, the, the combinations uh, in uh, elderly patients. Um, and with this, I uh, uh, will finish this, this section without uh, out, uh, Th thanking all the collaborators of the Myeloma, the Myeloma Center.